Jul på Vesterbro, Westbridge Christmas, episode 9, thoughts. Und i kufferten, or, you know, stomach pain slang. Another episode I love, spoilers for these first nine episodes, and let's dive right in. So, yeah, very funny opening exchange, very difficult to translate into to English, I tried. But yeah, um, yeah, Stuart says something that implies... You know, yeah, Danny asks the the question. You know, what is that? What is the the you know rocket or whatever? You know, Stewart says, yeah, I get okay, yeah. So I guess him, the first thing he says w would translate as that's a good question, and then Danny's like, yeah, I I ask the question, you know, and and Stewart responds with, you know. Yeah, some you know, I I don't know the the answer to the question, and and Danny's like, what? Why did you say it was a good question? You know, and and yeah, yeah, and then he's you know, good question. We're going in circles. Can you tell? And <laughs> Stuart suggests maybe it's an engine. You know, he'll he'll be uh, he'll be rocket powered into the just yeah. You know, And you know he's like oh like a like a superhero you know and he picks up one of the hot dogs da 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 da, da. and Danny's like do you want to put the hot dogs in the refrigerator maybe and Stuart says let's get the hot dog stand fixed first <laughs> that's the order in which you do these things and yeah on on TV you know the the point it's it's really made completely clear you know the the Uh, journalist says, you know, the the these you know nuke, nukes from the former Soviet Union today could be worth millions on the black market. Like he could he, he could pretty much look directly at the camera and say, Stuart, that's a nuke. That's why he was asking for two million. That's why it's this. Like he's obviously like. Old, what's the phrase? Old world Russian or something like you know. He's not one of the Russians who is is like oh you know like trust me. There's plenty of very nice Russians, you know. But if they look like that, if they're talking about you know having to, like yeah, it's it's very obvious. He's you know he's one of the people who turned to to crime. And which you know during the Soviet Union, fair enough, it, there there were places where you really couldn't get by if you you know had an honest job. But to today, that's obviously a problem. And yeah, uh, Stewart starts cutting onions, and everyone has a song. I, which, considering how Danny started, I'm glad we didn't have to hear more than like a second of it. And everyone cries because of the the cut onions. Most of them, it's because they're cutting onions. But with Danny, it's because the the cut onion is really close to, yeah. But but yeah, a lot of lot of fun with those. And you know, the the one in Russian is again this thing. You know, that's it's it's a Danish person impersonating sounds he's heard come out when Russians open their mouths. You know. But uh, let's see, yeah, and and um, let's see, yeah, and I like the the reactions to the 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 crying. You know, Anna comes in. Danny's not at work. Oh, that's um, <clears throat> that's not good. Oh, honey, you don't have to cry. We'll we'll work this out. No, it's it's the onion. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, Stuart. The onion. I think it's very sweet that you care that much about your son. <laughs> Just yeah. And let's see, yeah, and and when Igor comes up, you know, this suitcase is very important to me. <laughs> and and you know, Danny's like, yeah, it must be. You're blubbering like a baby. Let's see, uh, yeah, and and it is clever. You know, sometimes Stuart does have a good idea. Him filling in for Danny at the job, you know, doesn't go so well. But theoretically, a good idea, you know. The, the like, the bigger issue is if they've, you know, they've they've arranged to have this Santa there, 
and they just don't have one, that's worse than someone coming in and serving as, you know, a um, substitute. It's, you know, so the the you know it would still be better if it was Danny, but it's it's the the better yeah. And we get a transphobic joke where, you know, Stuart says Pokemon is like the name of this, you know, East Asian trans person that is, yeah. And let's see the, um, right, and yeah, um, Stuart ends up getting fired and in true Stuart Stardust fashion, as no one but him could, when he's told, get out of here, he beats up the guy. And, you know, comes home, I was fired. It wasn't that much blood. And, yeah, he's, you know, the, the, uh, Ana asks him, are, are you done already? Yeah, multiply that by ten, which was another thing that, Diskerusagang Mati in Danish, uh, yeah, I was definitely guilty. Me and my peers, back then teenage boys, we said that way too much. And, you know, if, if you were dealing with a teenage boy, at, you know, at the time, and he said something that was annoying, but you didn't know where it was, it's probably Honest Madison. And, yeah, and, and then, you know, he, he makes these, like, very, like, like kind of metaphorical statements, and, you know, honest, so you were fired. Oh, that too. So what was he talking about? Yes, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and, and Danny finally comes back. And, you know, he's like, no, I, I was, you know, being responsible. I got us 300, you know, hands it to Stuart. And Stuart's like, okay, that's, that's something at least. How'd you make 300? Oh, I sold the red suitcase. Right in front of Igor, right after he said, oh, I don't know anything about the suitcase, you know. And, and you know, Igor's like, did you sell the red suitcase? And Danny's response is just so funny. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> That's a yes or no question. You, you, don't, you don't a little bit sell something. That's just, wow. You know, like, okay, if you were, if it was something that could be portioned, like food, sure, but it's a suitcase, you know, just, yeah. And, yeah, we get the thing about, you know, um, let's, yeah, uh, uh, Igor threatens him, and Stuart says, nope, Danny, you're on your own here. And then, you know, the speaker, and, yeah, he points out, you know, who's paying 300 for a suitcase? That can't be open, you know, for, for, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll real quick fire up the currency converter so that Americans have a clue what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's like, it's 43 and a half dollars, so, you know, that's not nothing. For a suitcase that can't be opened, and, and Dan's like, oh, it was, it was some kids. <laughs> and the, uh, yeah, and, and then, you know, the speaker's like, how many onions does it take? For, for this, you know, hang, hung over, ah, crap, y'all call that something different, don't you? Um, when it's, because hangover's the thing, I feel like there's a specific term for hangover, hangover cure? Anyway, hangover cure uh, brunch, and does anything else go in there? Oh yeah, a little bit of Tabasco. <laughs> Because it's true, like, they've been cutting onions for a while now. Like, the, 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 about half of the episode, if not more, is, you know, of, of the, I'm, I'm not saying it's all we see, but, you know, the onion cutting starts very early and ends very late. Actually, it's probably more than half, you know. And it's, like, hours passing, you know, over the course of, of the episode. It, it cuts between different scenes. That's a lot of onions for, for, yeah, and, yeah, um, another very, very funny episode, and, let's see, I think that is all that I have to say for it. I should be able to do an episode tomorrow, and, yeah, catch you then.